the Voice Not Option podcast. Thanks for joining us. Please be sure to subscribe and follow our podcast so you can be automatically alerted when we produce a new episode on iTunes, Spreaker.com, Google Play, YouTube, and SoundCloud. And tell a friend and repost and retweet this podcast for us. Thanks. I, I'm really waiting for Hey Y'all, like every time we do a podcast now. Well, now you got me all like nervous, <laughs> like I can't do it because you clowned it. It's not, a, you know, you took the shine off of it. No, nah, I'm waiting for it. Like, it, it's not in the script. It's just... That's the one thing now that's a part of the podcast. Is all right, all right. Hey, y'all. <laughs> now you sound a real country cowboy. Girl. <laughs> real, real angry, and like Texas. Hey, hey, real angry, like you don't want to be from Texas now. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's whatever, <laughs> whatever. Focus. Okay, so on our last podcast, we talked about ten pounds for love. And 10 Pounds for Love is a challenge that we sent out three weeks ago where we challenged spouses to lose 10 pounds each over the last 10 years of the, oh, excuse me, weeks of the year. Um, one pound a week. And this is week four. Stephen, have you lost your four pounds? You know what? Um, we were supposed to record yesterday and I was fully prepared to say I've lost three pounds and I was on my way to losing that fourth pound by the end of the week. <laughs> Oh, you needed that extra day. I needed that. I need. I need. I need two, three days. No, no, it's worse. It's not even. It's worse than what I was going to say initially. And so today, I got on the scale. I actually gained them three pounds back. Oh no! That actually, uh, yeah, that happened to me. It's not easy. It is not easy. But I also, it's my birthday, so I've had birthday cake every day, which is not good. Um, but it's it's. Yeah, this week has been hard, and have, and no you excuse. lose the weight, and it comes back so quickly. I don't have no good excuse. Um, let me you keep keep talking about stuff. I <laughs> what did I have? Well, I think um, so. I am trying to learn how to, um, you know, not celebrate as big, not have as many cocktails and and cake. <laughs> I, know, I know what I did. Okay, I thought of an excuse. I went to the Jay Z concert and and we ate good and partied good and Ooh. all that. And and we was in a suite. It was crazy. Ooh, I'm gonna talk about the suite too. Let me get back. Um, but the <laughs> thing I noticed too, I'm gonna blow your mind on that. It was crazy. But the, okay. the thing I noticed too about, I think my body now actually fluctuates those three pounds, and I really hadn't done any hard, you know, losing a yeah. Weight. You know, yeah. and so I've seen a couple of times my weight go up and down like that. And so other things I'm thinking about now is um, I really have to adopt what you said about um, food is fuel. Mm-hmm. Like I really have to adopt that. Um, mm-hmm. Another another thing I've done differently in the past week is I've started drinking coffee. And so I didn't think, is that a, coffee normally have a lot of calories in it, right? Coffee has like almost no calories. Okay, it's then. the cream and sugar that you put in it. Yeah, I got all this. I got all kind of white chocolate yeah. mochas and all kinds. Oh, kind of, yeah, that's the problem. Because I don't like caffeine and coffee, but I need caffeine because I'll be mm-hmm. sleeping. I'll be sleeping if I don't. And so um, those are the things I'm doing wrong, but I need to go to food Food is fuel. Um, mm-hmm. Then the second thing, and this is, and we're not just talking here, everybody listening to the podcast. We're really trying to give y'all real life feedback from people that's trying to lose weight and you right. know, struggles in a conversation. We're not just talking. We know we're recording. Right. <laughs> the other thing I noticed too, I, I, I got to get back to, and I don't know if we said this on the last podcast or not, but it's okay to be hungry. Yes, that is the biggest thing. And for me, what I am realizing that I'm going to have to start doing is setting a, a clock. Like I will eat at certain times throughout the day to get the fuel that I need. But, um, you know, I will sit in the office and kind of snack all day long. And that's not healthy. Right. And so, and then the, one of the things we did say last week that I'm actually putting into work now is forcing myself to eat the the healthy stuff. Like when I'm not hungry, like I never learned, like I'll get hungry every three or four hours. And so I just eat whatever when I'm hungry. And now I'm like, I bring my apple with me to the office. I eat my apple. Like I eat it or, oh, you know what I learned just today? I learned how to drink water. Okay, yeah, that that's happen. major. What I really mean is, I will. I, my problem with water has always been that I try to drink water like I drink sweet tea or something like that, or lemonade. 
right? Mm-hmm. So when you get another drink, you sip on it. You sit it down and you drank a little bit now, you drank a little bit 30 minutes from now and all that. Now what I decided to do just today was when I get water, I drink it. Yeah. I mean, you should just chug it as, um, you know, throughout the day and um, and replace everything. Like, um, you know, I used to be at the point where I only drink water, tea, and on occasion wine. Um, and I've gotten out of that habit and I'm trying to get back into it. Yep. And so like, I got like 12 ounces of water, drunk it right now. And, and, and what I, what I think about myself is I'll get 12 ounces of water, go sit down at my desk. I drank six hours, six ounces. And then somehow, you know, I never get around to drinking the other mm-hmm. six ounces because mm-hmm. my, my body and my, my, my taste buds are not like, Ooh, let me get that water. Like I'm not at that level with it. And so now I'm like more committed to just drink the whole, you know, 12 ounces, 16 ounces, whatever it is right there and be done. And just do that. And you only have to do it four or five times a day and, and you got your water intake. Yep. Wake up in the morning. And I did do that. I, for, I kind of forgot about that. Like I did do that uh, last year or year before where I would wake up. First thing I did was drunk 16 ounces of water. It was like mm-hmm. the first thing I did. As soon as I had water sitting by the bed. So I'm, I'm going to do that again. Um, and, and sometimes so, oh, we forget how critical that is to the whole weight loss program. Yes. Just having water. No, no. Speak. Go on. Go on. Give us a minute on that. <laughs> well, um, just you know, flushing your body out, and um, sometimes you mistake thirst for hunger. So um, you'll you'll eat something when you really are just thirsty, and you just drink water, and you're fine. I actually started doing better with that in the evenings because I was one of those people that felt like I had to have a snack every night. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, my snack was cookies and chips and I can't do that no more. Right. And so um, I started teaching myself, like I can go get like I I buy more deli meat now, like good quality deli meat. And I'll eat uh, like a couple pieces of deli meat and then I drink, you know, 10 ounces of water. And now I'm good. So that's a big one. Um, Eating late and, you know, like we should probably have dinner around seven o'clock and not eat for the rest of the night. If you have to, your snack should be um, fruit or nuts or, um, you know, maybe like you said, some deli meat or something that's completely natural and not processed. I've seen that deli meat thing too. That thing is real. Like I've seen cats who are like crazy workout people and Uh they just walk around with deli meat. Mm-hmm. It's protein, but you also have to be careful about that because you want to make sure it's not like pro- processed um, and that it's not high in sodium. Right. Um, so you have to watch that as well. But yeah, just making sure you're not eating overly processed foods after seven, eight o'clock at night. Be clear. Yep. The deli meat come from the deli. Somebody sliced it. Not something that was- <laughs> right. That was actually from a chicken. <laughs> right. Somebody sliced it. I, if it's in a, a, a box, it, you know, and all that, it was probably been processed and all exactly. kinds of stuff added to it. And that's bad for you too. So now Jay-Z concert. Okay. Uh, real quick. So we go to Jay-Z concert. We're in a suite, right? And uh-huh. uh, we bought our tickets to the suite. I don't know. We spent maybe- 250 something like that per ticket to get in the suite. Oh, so wow. My man, yeah. It was, wait, it was, was it, wait, okay. Was it 250 worth of concert? Yeah, I love Jay-Z. Okay. Like, I forgot how much I love Jay-Z. Like, okay. You know, oh, I got two stories about, to, we about to have a whole other podcast. Um, <laughs> uh, so the first story about the Jay-Z concert was um, um, the group that I was with, it's like 22 people. I don't know them all. Maybe I know half of them. Right. Uh-huh. But but then like a week before the concert, my man sends up the email saying, hey, we're about to get food. So food is going to cost fifty dollars a person for food and drink. And people was like, I don't want to I'm not going to eat. So I don't want to pay the fifty dollars a person. <laughs> Damn dudes, man. I, I, I can I can understand. I mean, that's a hundred dollars. I hate people. Are you really? Would you? I hate people like that, man. I mean, you know what? If it was a whole group going in, I would go in. But I will have to say, you know, Farron and I would have to have a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> we would both be like, dog, we don't really want to come up off of this $100. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't drink. I wasn't like, well, I don't drink. Can I pay you $32? Oh, pay? wow. Now, that's the kind of people that bother me. What? What's the same people? What are you talking no, about? No, no. We're like, if we're going to pay it, we're going to pay it. We're not going to worry about it. But the people who be like nickel and diamond, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother category. Right. We can't, man. You, you in the Jay-Z concert, you in a suite and you won't pay $50 a person for food and drinks. 
I mean, I guess at the point that you paid two fifty a ticket, you might as well pay fifty dollars for some food. But but if you go to a concert, don't you plan on spending some money, or you just go, you know, you eat a whole lot before you get there, and then you just you know try to make it four hours? Well, you know, I always be trying to find a hookup. So oh, that's why I can't. I just <laughs> oh, so we at the concert, right? And then uh-huh. I'm the and so I'm in the, I'm in it's like three levels to the to the little suite area we're in. So I'm on a second level and I'm standing up and I'm crunk and my hands are going up and down, little John, Aye. all that. I'm going hard, I'm reciting all the lyrics, Jay-Z, all the classics. A woman behind me says, Hey, can you um sit down? What? We're in the suite. It's not like it's not like I'm at church and she can't see the pastor and we all on the same level. I'm at she's I'm at a lower level, she's at a higher level. But if, if but she you're at a Jay Z concert, who's gonna be trying to sit down? If she stood up, she can see over me, right? I really almost went to cussing, but I was with my wife and all that. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like it, it, I really was go zero to a hundred, like just immediately go to cussing. Like I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing at the Jay Z. Now concert. those right, those are the kind of people you should be complaining about, not the fifty dollars. She can <laughs> me. Like, 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 while brush your shoulders off or something, like, get your dirt off your shoulders, just get that dirt off uh-uh. your shoulders off. And she interrupted me, and I, I really wanted to go to cussing, and I caught myself because the wife was with me, and I said, Hey, you know what? I can switch seats with you. I'll get back there because I'm not sitting down. You can right? sit right here. And she was like, No, I don't want to switch, switch seats. I just, I just would like for you to sit down. And she was polite, but that's not the point. Yeah, but no, you can't ask me to sit down and then not be willing to to do something to participate. Because I mean, that's just crazy. Ignored her for the rest of the concert. Just went to yeah, I would have. I don't. It, no, it, I'm not sitting on, down if you don't want to move. Fire. <laughs> she could have been on fire after that. I would not have. I, I, I really like. I was really agitated. Like, if I got to talk to her again, it's gonna be a problem. Like, I'm gonna get in. <sighs> I have to talk to yeah. her. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a buzzkill. So mm-hmm. okay, okay. <laughs> So was was there another Jay Z story? No, nah, no, nah, that's it, that's it. Okay, all right. So let's get back to Ten Pounds for Love. Okay, so uh, Ten Pounds of Love really was about, and and still is. I said about like it was a long time ago. It's about right? like, infusing more sex and better sex into our marriages. Amen. So be, so be clear, we want married people to have more sex than single people. Amen, amen. And you know what? So. I would normally be like, wait, I don't know if that's possible because, you know, it's single people just getting it in. But I actually looked up stats. Uh Uh-oh. And they actually say because married people are having sex more consistently than single people, married married people really do have more sex. Oh, so they're saying some people go through... uh, uh, Droughts. uh, They they got a valley in this. Exactly. Like like 2015 was a bad year. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> some of us it was 2012 to 2015 <laughs> oh yeah okay and if you say women and men together some yeah women will go three four five years yeah. when i have it yeah. easy oh I yeah. forgot about that so yeah, was- when you calculate all that in married people could be i mean they're supposed to be winning some folks yeah but uh we gonna work on that Okay. All right. Well, go ahead and on, go on down and introduce it then. Where we at? Where, <laughs> okay. Where so, what well, we got to do a rehash? Yes. Okay. So, you wrote the article of uh, 10 Pounds for Love on StephenJamesDixon.com. And um, in this article, we broke it down into three parts. So, oh, the first part is about what you eat. And um, we talked about that, like I said in the last podcast, but we wanted to give you all the steps again. Step one is fall is fat season. That's Tamara's line. I love it. <laughs> it really is, though. Yep. Get, get, get them a fat season. Get them one or two. Uh, let's, do, let's do a little bit more rehashing. So fall is fat season. Go Tamara. I mean, because fall is this season, it gets cold. You don't want to do nothing but sit in the house. You want to cuddle up. You want to just eat. Um, all the holidays are falling into this, you know, fall and winter. And um, so it's just easy to just sit here and gain weight. So nobody want to go run outside. Nobody wants to go ride a bike outside. So it's just easy to gain weight. And most people gain the majority of the their weight gain during the fall and winter season. You know what? That's how I gained the weight, too, because I used to jog outside. And now mm-hmm. it's too dark to dark, jog outside. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a huge problem. Like, I just don't, I, I don't like daylight that. savings I don't like... is like, I, I I don't know why we still do that. Yeah, yeah. Like it's dark at five thirty now. It's you know crazy. I mean? So 
I, you can't do it. Like I was going, I wanted to jog. I couldn't jog. One day I wanted to play basketball outside with my son. I was like, it's going to be dark. Like you can't do yep. that. So that's yep. step one on how to lose a pound a week. Step two was you put what in your mouth? Mm-hmm. Because we like to eat. <laughs> 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 Whatever it is, I will tell you for my birthday, I bought some cake and put it in the refrigerator so that that morning I could have birthday cake for breakfast. Good, good cake. Oh my goodness! It was red velvet with cream cheese icing. Not, not. They didn't have that at Kroger. They didn't have it there. Uh, yes, they did. They got that from. They got that from Kroger now. Mm, Kroger's got some good red velvet. Why are you tripping? Well, well, actually, you the same person that said you like icing more than cake. So I yeah. do. I do. That's, That's true. still so weird. That's still yeah. so. Weird. <laughs> Step Whatever. three is food is fuel. Like we were just talking about, food is fuel. Exactly. So when you focus on what your body actually needs, um, protein, fruits and vegetables, um, complex carbs, um, then you feed your body just what it needs to have as opposed to, you know, the simple carbs and the sugars and the processed foods and the things that are not fuel for your body. And and really, you got to think about that in terms of like, you know, like what you put in your car, like my car. It, it has to have premium gas or it's sputtering or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, you got that. I can't just put whatever, you know, junk in my car. Same thing. I can't put whatever junk in my body. You know, we right. really got to look at food as fuel like that. Right. And we have to change our mentality in that um, food is fuel and not entertainment. Because a lot of times everything that we do um, centers around food. You have... Um, a shower, baby shower, bridal shower, wedding, or, um, you know, barbecues or anything. It's always, you know, every event, just getting together. Hey, let's go to lunch. Hey, let's go to dinner. Everything is centered around food and food is not entertainment. It's fuel. We just had the argument about the food in the Jay-Z concert. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because we feel like anytime we do something, we got to eat with it. All right. So the first part was about what you eat. The second part of the article that we broke it down is um, working out. And um, step number four is prioritizing workout time. Well, workout time, what we mean by that is workout is working out is not something that you're going to stumble up on and do on accident or you know, you're not going to be sitting around on the couch and just say, you know what? I just thought about working out. <laughs> like it don't, real, it, it don't work like that. Working out means you have to plan that in advance. If you want to work out in the morning, you got to plan in the morning to work out. You got to pack, pack your, bag. your bag. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, if you work yeah. out on the way home from work, you still got to pack your bag. If you yeah. work out when you get home, you got to schedule that with the family. Um, for a while, I was coming home and going and work out like at nine o'clock at night. So in order to do that, make sure my son in the bed, make sure the dishes washed, make sure the food put up. And then I go nine o'clock. Either way, however you do it, working out has to be prioritized. Yes, it does. Um, and then the next step, number five, was finding the fun in fitness. Yeah, I think um, when we're trying to lose weight, sometimes we have the wrong approach. Like we just talked about working out and we have to prioritize working out. But mm-hmm. all of our workouts don't have to be like that. Right. You know, it's like, like, so like right now, um, downtown, I'll walk around a lot downtown, just walking around, uh, seeing the sights. Um, listening to a podcast, listening to some music or whatever, really enjoying the good weather and all that kind of thing, just walking. I've had couples that ride bikes together. I have had couples get on rowboats together, you know, in the lake and just kind of roll around there. It's other fun things you can do together. Um, I think you said you and Farron do something fun. Was it you? Bike riding, yep. Bike riding, okay. So, um, and we do things like um, go to the batting cages and, um you know, um, he's been trying to get me on the golfing range, um, but uh, we we enjoy, you know, just doing different fitness things together. Okay. And step six is work out for a health increase and energy increase. This one was yours. What you what you had on that? Well, just that um, a lot of times we are just tired. We're just tired all the time, and and working out. Um, is not just about, you know, being cute, but it also benefits your health. It, um, you know, people's blood pressures have been decreased. Um, blood sugars have been regulated. Um, you know, having more energy, um, all of these health benefits can come from working out. Uh, increasing your metabolism too. Well, well, not necessarily. Well, I guess 
it burns more calories, which causes your metabolism to increase. Right? Yeah, but the more you burn calories, like if you start out the day burning calories with a good workout, you will continue burning calories at a higher rate throughout the day. Okay. Workout for health increases energy. Okay. The third part is about husbands and wives having more sex. So what we try to do is say, hey, uh, we're not having as much sex because we're not as healthy. Um, we're, we're overweight, so we need to lose some weight. So if we eat better, we work out a little bit, build our energy up, maybe we'll start having more sex. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Um, so we also had step seven that we forgot about. Um, that was about Thanksgiving. Oh, no, Thanksgiving wait. Week? Okay, no, you, you, oh, Thanksgiving week is, is next week. Okay, cool. Yes. So Thanksgiving is coming up this week. And um, that was one thing that we wanted to remember. You can easily gain all that weight back in one week. Um, like we just talked about, it's easy to gain it just on a regular week. But Thanksgiving is a whole nother category. Um, so just focus on, and uh, we will commit to doing this, on Thanksgiving being one good meal, not eating for a whole weekend starting on Thursday. So it's really not a weekend. It's like four days. Um, so wait, so wait. just eat Did good for one wait. good meal. Hold on. I think I might have agreed to something early on when we was writing the article, but now that we get closer to Thanksgiving, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do we say one meal or do we say one we day? We said one meal. And this is not to say that you cannot, um, you know, eat, leftovers or whatever, but you want to have smaller portion sizes, reduce the carbs, no dessert, um, you know, outside of that one good meal, um, you have your one cheat meal, but outside of that, focus on turkey and vegetables. People just closing a podcast when you say (laughs) people just stop, just unsubscribe when you say don't eat dessert. (laughs) You know what? No, no. I can't go with you. I ain't agree to no eat no dessert. I ain't agree to that. We said dessert for one meal. We have one okay, cheat meal. Okay, okay. I and think, then after that, we're not going to be eating sweet potato pie for a whole weekend. Sweet potato pie got some kind of value. It's got too much sugar in it, though, huh? Yes, yes. And and whatever else. Is it caro syrup or whatever? I don't know. Um, what maybe I'm thinking pecan pie, huh? All those pies. You like all those pies, too. We're going to have to come on. You know what? We're going to be this podcast next week and we're going to be apologizing for all the lies. <laughs> like, okay, I'm, if I'm, I can commit, if I can commit, then anybody can do it because dessert is my weakness. But I'm sorry, y'all. I ate a whole <laughs> <pie>. <laughs> That's what we're going to be doing all next week on the podcast. Because um, I make sweet potato cheesecake. So, you know what, you know what though? I have been doing better and I can continue to do better at my portion size and we all can do better. Our yes. Size. Yes. And I've actually started using just like, um, the small like dessert plate for my dinner plate because it, you really don't need that much food. You really don't. You know, that's a good idea. Um, cause we have some, like my wife has some like China dishes or some kind of little mm-hmm. small dishes. Mm-hmm. And if I put my sides, just pile as much as I could into those little things, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. They're really small. But I think that would help me out a lot with my portion size because I've always just ate a lot. But that's when I was more active and I need to do do. I definitely need to do better my portion size. So, yeah, if you use a six or seven inch plate as opposed to a nine or 10 inch plate, then you're portioning better. Um, So we want to make sure um, we we stay with the smaller portions. We have only one cheat meal um, and that we reduce the carbs and starches outside of that cheat meal. And, um, and then we continue to exercise like after Thanksgiving, after the dinner, get up and go. I mean, cause I don't know about everybody else, but we eat at like two or three yeah. and, you know, get up and go walk. Yeah, um, actually that walk would be very, very cool, man. Like if you get your whole family right. you know, eat at two o'clock, then at four 30, everybody get up, just go take a walk. The weather's been good. Hope the weather be mm-hmm. good on Thanksgiving and just take a walk. You know what I mean? And then we can continue to work out really Really, we need to, as we get older, this is what we have to do, Tamara. We have to commit to working out during Thanksgiving weekend. You know, like, yes. we got to do that. Now. When I, what I used to do, and um, it's too late to register now, but I'm, I'm going to try to do it next year. I used to do the turkey trot um, on Thanksgiving morning, which is a 5K. 
Wow. Yeah, it's too late to register. Um, so it's too late to register now, but it's not too late to run Thanksgiving morning. Yeah, I'm pretty confident it's too late to register. 5K, huh? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah confident. But- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too late yeah, to register. But- but we can still, and, and actually doing it on your own is a little bit easier because the logistics were hard for that when you go do the turkey trot and you got to get home and try to figure out how to cook yeah, um, or finish cooking or whatever. But, um, you know, getting up Thanksgiving morning, doing a quick little um, mile or two run, walk, run, walk or whatever. Um, and then, um, you know, have that knocked out. And then you can also do the walk after um, Thanksgiving dinner as a family. And that's a way to reconnect for everybody to reconnect or just you and your spouse. If you just want the two of you, Um, you know, because usually the whole family is there. So you can leave the kids with somebody in the house and just go and just talk for 30 minutes. Yep. Okay, so let's move on to step eight and resetting our sexual. Also, so let's third part again was about um, husbands and wives having more sex in their marriages. Mm -hmm. We had three more steps to close out our 10 step process to husbands and wives having more sex. Step eight was resetting sexual expectations. Step nine was scheduling a sexual experience. Step ten was just be freak nasty. Just just be a freak for your for your Okay, so you just kind of glazed over these. (laughs) So yeah, we can break them down. Let's do it. Um, okay. So resetting sexual expectations. You want to go or you want me to go? Go right ahead. Resetting sex, sex expectations. What I what I, what I I saw in a lot of couples was sometimes you got off track sexually and we really were not prepared to learn how to get back on track. And so- um, you How does that happen? When you're married, what happened is you, you go through a period where you're upset with each other and then you kind of just get off on like, like when you, when you get married, everybody go to bed at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like everything is, we doing something together. We go to sleep. We watching the show. We in the bed, and you know, instead of being on the couch. And now you have a fight. And now one person is sitting on the couch. One person is in the bed. One person go to bed at 10. One person go to bed at 11. You know what I'm saying? And so you mess up all those things and you forget in the process that, hey, when we went to bed together at 10, we spent time together. We were intimate. We ended up having sex. And now you somebody's know, sleep. There are so many things to think about in marriage. <laughs> Yes. So you have to make a conscious effort to go to bed at the same time. Yes. Um. And 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 little things I tell men is like no smile, no sex. Like if you ever had that, if mm-hmm. you ever made that woman smile today, don't try to have sex with her. Uh. Things I tell women is that um. You, you sometimes women actually forget that the only person that the man can have sex with is them. But you know what, dudes be acting like I mean nowadays like they don't mind not having sex. You're right. I've been seeing that more and more. Actually, probably the last three or four couples I've worked with where sex was an issue, it was the woman who was saying, I'm not getting enough oral sex or I'm not getting enough actual sex. And I've had to actually talk to more men about that over the last year than women. And so definitely um, we it's, it's both parties now just resetting that. And really, we saw on lifehacker.com, the happiest couples have sex two to three times a week. And so you and, and some women, I've actually had women come to me and, and not really have a feel for how much sex to have. Yep. But then again, that's like, that's average. So that's not everybody's. I mean, some people need more, some people need less. So it's, you know, everybody has to figure it out for themselves. But on average, two to three times a week is like the happiest couples. And then and then the way you have to figure out that average is, say, um, say I want to have sex twice a week and my wife wants to have sex six times a week then I have to know that it's not going to be twice a week. Like I have to give that up and know that everything I'm doing in my marriage is compromising. So I need to try my best to get to four. Like how do we get to four times a week? If I, if I want it twice, she wants wow. it six. I, want, I need to know that it cannot be twice a week. She needs to know it cannot be six times a week. I think that right? was mind blowing for somebody. Yeah, yeah. Some people out there just, because it's been your sex the yeah. whole time you've been single. And now it's not your sex anymore. It's shared. <laughs> that's that's a major concept. It's shared. Sex is shared. It is our sex now, right? Because the moment you say to me that you can, the moment my wife, if my wife was to say to me that she can decide when we were having sex, then what that really means is we don't have a shared sexual experience and you controlling your sex. And if I'm controlling my sex, that means I'm also having sex with other people because now I'm controlling <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if I'm not having sex with nobody else, yeah. then, then we together. And so that's why I've had couples who really 
like lose sight of that and really just like, I don't want to have sex. And I'm like, no, you're married. You don't just get to, I don't want to have sex. Like, what are you talking about? You don't just get to do that. You know, we got to work that out. We got to figure that out. What do you need? What do, what, what wounds need to heal? What counseling do we need to go through? Or do you need something more serious, like a sexual therapist? Or what do you need? Because you got to fix your sexual problem. Because having sex is what makes your marriage different from a relationship. Exactly. Well, not just that. I mean, sexual intimacy is the only thing um, that that you can get from your partner that you can't get from anyone or anywhere else. So, and I'm glad you 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 added the word intimacy because sometimes we start talking about sex and people just think we talking about the f word and that's it. No, we, it's all of it. Right, it's kissing everything, the foreplay, all of that stuff is is what's needed in a marriage. You know, and I and I've had men tell me, "Well, I'm not that affectionate." I had a woman tell me this week that she just doesn't need affection or attention or intimacy, and it's just because of just how she was raised and what she saw. She grew up. And I tell all those people, I don't care what you had or what you experienced or what you observed before your marriage. I tell you what is best for marriage. And what is best for marriage is that we figure out how to have sex two to three times a week at a minimum. Okay. For Next most one? people. Now, if you, now, again, I want to put the and caveat. The if you agree on some different number together and you both are on the same page, go for it. Thank you for always adding that in there for me because I never add disclaimers. I just <laughs> I just tell people what it is, but uh, yeah, right. I, I mean, if you're a couple and once a week works for you, then by all means, you know, continue with what works for you. But what works for you means that both parties are happy. Right. And you'd be surprised how many times I've had couples come in here and the man cheated or the woman cheated. Uh, I probably never had to ask this. I know for a fact with women, it's been numerous occasions where I say to a woman, is your husband happy sexually when the husband had cheated? Yeah. And, and you'd be surprised how many women tell me, I don't know. Wow. I'm like, y'all been married 10 years and you don't know if he's happy sexually. You I think I, I don't know is a no. Right. Just And you just don't want to say no. <laughs> right. Because if he's happy, like, oh yeah, he told me last night. Exactly. I didn't. You know what I'm saying? You're right. Just, just I, what do you mean you don't know? That means that you know he's unhappy. And when so, and you got to work on that. You can't just let some. The, that's a whole other podcast too, Tamra. Just how sometimes people just just decide to live in unhappiness inside the mm, marriage. Mm-hmm. They just accept it. So, and sex one of those things where, well, I've had couples tell me, well, we just don't have time for sex. No, make times for sex. Yeah, well, but the other thing is, if you both agree on say one time a week or whatever it is, um, I would assume that you probably need to make sure you're getting intimacy in some other way like y'all are really talking a lot or you know touching a lot just affection or something you know that there's some way that you're getting that intimacy it may not be sexual but it, you're connecting in some way if you don't have intimacy you don't have a marriage exactly. like you maybe you got some kind of contractual agreement and some kind of understanding maybe y'all partners maybe y'all friends but a real marriage should have intimacy in you. And people got to remember all my spouses that are listening out there right now. If you don't, if you're not intimate with your partner, what is it that it's like, like, like I can feel my wife, you know what I mean? Like my, I, my wife is a part of who I am. I, I carry her with me every day. If we don't have any kind of connection, then I can be connected at any given moment with anybody else walking the face of the earth. Yep. And one thing that I love, my husband is really good about, at doing is um, he listens um, and not just to what I'm saying, but to the way I'm saying it. Like he he can tell um, if I'm just basically how I'm feeling and, and you know, whatever inflections and he, he kind of reads beyond the words um, by listening. And, and I think that communication is very important. Um, you, you mentioned um, about husbands being respected and wives or husbands feeling respected and wives feeling loved and how you need to communicate um, and, and make sure that the husband is feeling respected and the wife is feeling loved. Right. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's just really, really important that as married people, if we're having a problem with sex, we have to fix it. You cannot just, anybody listening right now, if you have a problem with sex, you have to fix it. And fixing it means that that you go through a process of trying new and different things until you find something that works. That sounds like fun. <laughs> exactly. Like, 
and it kind of and it kind of leads into step nine, right? When you talk about scheduling the sexual experience. Uh, okay, <laughs> like just the thought of scheduling sex is just not really. It doesn't sound cool to me. <laughs> And so, and so the thing about it is, why the way I look at schedule, it's so much fun. Like I love to schedule sex. Like because what that really? means to me is, I love it because what that means to me is I'm gonna get a better experience. That's what it means to me. You see what I'm saying? Like, like it's ske- scheduling sex doesn't mean okay from nine o two to nine o nine. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's not what it means to me. It means like from nine p.m. To 11 p.m. That means at 9 p.m. Maybe we get in the bathtub together, or we take a shower together, or I, you know, it, it it feels like, or it sounds to me like it takes the the spontaneity out of it. It takes the spontaneity out of it, but it brings the romance into it. So that means because scheduling means we've scheduled time for this purpose. Okay. The purpose is to be to be romantic. To have foreplay, to have intimacy, to spend time looking in each other's eyes. Sometimes me and my wife would just be laying in the bed looking at each other, you know, and talking and feeling each other. You know what I mean? And like not rushed. It's, it's scheduled. The kid, hey, this weekend, the kids is gone. <laughs> Congratulations. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We're going to be staying at the hotel this weekend. You know what I'm saying? It's scheduled. So- Okay, I, I I get that. Like that's a whole different thing. Of okay, we got a free weekend, or you know, um, it's mommy daddy time. But I feel like saying okay, nine o'clock on Tuesday, we gonna have sex. Right, but don't say you don't say nine o'clock on Tuesday we're gonna have sex. Nine o'clock on Tuesday we're gonna have a sexual experience. Okay. See what I'm saying? Again, it's not just put it in at nine o'clock. Like hey, it's nine o'clock. Are you gonna put it in? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and can you be done by nine fifteen? Because I'm tired. <laughs> right. That's that's no. We got to schedule more time. We got to schedule at least like an hour, man. Like like. And so what that means is, is is Thursday night. We're scheduling sex for nine o'clock. That means that tonight we're gonna work extra hard to get the kids to bed on time. We're gonna work really really hard from the time we're gonna leave work a little bit early. Fight. You know. You know. Run a couple more red lights. Get home. Uh, get the kids fed real quick. Get them in the shower. Get them get homework. We're gonna try to get that done earlier. Normally we're gonna get it done till nine thirty. Today we're gonna get it done at eight thirty. And then we're gonna get ourselves in the shower. We're gonna take a shower together. We're gonna clean each other up. We're gonna put lotion on each other. Whatever we're gonna do. Whatever we wanna do to enjoy each other's company. You have to invest in the marriage. So that's really what this is about. You made a comment in the article that kind of really made me think about. Um... Like you said, um, figure out something, some positive things to say to each other. Um, but it really kind of made me think about also trying to avoid um, landmines, I guess, of things. You know how you all, you say something and then bam, an argument started and you didn't mean to go there. Right. And then you correct it. See, that's another skill. So that's why y'all, that's why y'all got to listen to Stephen J. <laughs> right. Cause, cause, because. I tell you how to correct all those things. Like, like say for example, me and my wife was doing that, and I tried to compliment her on something, and it, and it was a landmine. She hit something. She don't like. Well, about time you put gas in my car. Hey, honey, we ain't doing that right now. <laughs> exactly. I just, I just shut it down. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like, we don't have to have that debate. And and I and I have couples sometimes that just feel like they have to have the argument or the debate in that moment. And I shut it down. Like, honey, we're not on that right now. We we focusing in on something else that we about to get to, and it's about to go down. You know, we talk about that tomorrow. Like, I'm really good at, you know, we don't we don't have to have an argument. We don't have to have a discussion about something. We try to get into a whole nother mood. This is important for our marriage. You know what I mean? And people got to really look at it like that. It's not, I mean, you know, I guess part of the problem is as a single person, when you, you know, commit and, you know, submit sin and sex, having sex around, we kind of maybe belittle the value of sex or something like that. So when we get married, it's not a big deal. It's just sex. No, when we get married, I get to do this one thing with one person. That is it. Yeah. And so it has to be special. It has to be unique. It has to be the bomb. It has to be, you know what I mean? Like it cannot just be that, you know, we just doing it. Well, you know, we're just going to go, I'm going to go have sex with my guests. It can't just be, hey, um, we're in the kitchen and my wife be like, hey, um, I gotta wait for the dishwasher to get done. I got 15 minutes. So if you want to do this now, it can't be that. You know what I'm saying? Like, not all the time. Sometimes life. That's cool. <laughs> right, right. Sometimes that's cool. As a matter of fact, I'll give you half the time. 
If you just find 15 minutes to get it popping, cool. But it can't be like that all the time. And if you find yourself in a rut where you're not enjoying your sexual experiences, the the, the first thing you got to recognize is probably not just you. It's probably also your partner that's not enjoying their sexual experience. And then you schedule an experience, not scheduling sex. You're scheduling a sexual experience. Well, that kind of goes into what you have for number 10 uh, with the freak nasty, because you, you start off with saying you've heard both husbands and wives call sex a chore. <laughs> yeah, it's heartbreaking when I hear that. Um, it's just, it just really is like, like, and I'm like, I just, it just really throws me off. Like, <laughs> like even when I'm in session and a couple says that, like it always, I just, I'm just a back. I'm just taking a back by the statement like because i love sex with my wife so much that i'm like you got a wife y'all can have same free sex y'all go enjoy and um the last time the guy said it to me oh this is this is what happened the guy told me he said every night him and his wife take a shower together and then they get in the bed together that's awesome and they talk and they snuggle but they just don't have sex because sex is like a chore wait what i'm like how y'all do all that and y'all don't have sex yeah, what did he say to that? He just said it just doesn't happen. Like, I don't initiate. She refuses to initiate. And maybe I don't initiate just because I don't I don't know. I don't know why I don't really what? initiate. Yeah, that's what he said. I, I didn't get a chance to follow yeah, I didn't get a chance to follow up with him on that. Yeah, I but, need uh, I need to follow up on it. Because that doesn't to do all of that, that's very intimate and sexual exactly. and and just stop. And I had to say, man, you don't smack on the ass or nothing. Y'all in the shower. He's like, yeah, I, I just, I just, that's how you. I talk in my session. Leave right, it I just, you. I just talk like that in my session. I'll bleep it out later, probably not. But yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, I, I was like, man, yeah, how y'all not do that? And 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 he was just like, I don't, I don't. I said, no, man. Yeah, you got to do better. You got to initiate. But really, it led me to really thinking about um, the wife was adamant about I'm not initiating sex. She's like, I never initiated sex when I was single. Why do I have to initiate sex when I was married? Wow. Why do I have to do that? And I was blown away. But there are women out there who feel like I'm not but, initiating sex. Okay. But this is different. And it's your husband and you want him to feel wanted. Right. Then it goes both ways. Like, I think that women should initiate sex. Exactly. Think, both partners think, should you know, feel wanted. And, and, and like we said at the beginning of the show, um, more and more men are not having sex, are not initiating sex themselves. They lazy, tired, whatever. Uh, the you know as we get older, you know what I'm saying. They go get that Viagra. Brothers out there, go get that Viagra, or whatever. I ain't had to use it myself. Oh, you know what I'm go. saying. TMI. I ain't, ain't got to use it myself. <laughs> we I'm don't strength. need to know all that. You know <laughs> but but if you got to do that, man, that's what you got to do. You got to make sure your woman is happy in the bedroom. Women, you got to make sure your man is happy in the bedroom. It's really really important that we get back to having great sex. So I, mean. I want to close it out with the line that you said. Um, that you said a wife said to you once, I am not his porn star. And your response was, if not you, then who? Every husband deserves a porn star. Well, all righty then. Or, or every wife be a porn star. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I didn't even, I said, no, you are definitely his porn star. Like he, he gets a porn star. Like you didn't know that. Like, did you sign <laughs> something that said, yes, I'm a porn star. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, what are you talking about? I'm not his porn. And I'm, and I'm not trying to, and, and what I say in that is I, I'm not trying to say, do some experimentation that you're not comfortable with. I'm not saying that, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying that be open, communicate, talk about things you're not comfortable with. Definitely say to yourself that I, I need to try and, you know, ex, you know, try and experiment something. Like, I, I mean, I, I, it's tough to, without getting, you know, into you know, using some, some vulgarity <laughs> in my language, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's keep but, it um, PG. Keep trying to keep it PG, but um, definitely just can't, you just can't be in your own mind about how sex is. That's the key. It's a shared sexual experience now. It's not just yours anymore. And if you want to have a marriage, you have to have the attitude that sex is shared. It's not just a, like, like it is the one thing actually that you actually do share. You know what I mean? Like, and the way the example I give is, okay, I don't want Popeye's chicken. I, I get church's chicken, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't want pizza and I get Papa John's. Mm-hmm. You know uh, I mean? We ain't like, getting Papa John's, but go ahead. Yeah, you're right. We don't do Papa John's at all no more. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Like, if if I want to get wings, I can go to Wingstop or Chicken Express or whatever. Um, if I don't like the soap my wife uses in the shower, I can buy my own soap. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to drive the car she drives. She wanted a certain kind of car. I wanted a certain kind of car. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things in the house. She wanted 
to be able to do what she wanted to do in the living room is my office. Like everything else is separate. Everything else, I can have my own independent opinion of what I want. And sex, I cannot have my own independent opinion. Everything about sex is compromised. Everything about sex is negotiated. And so, like I said initially, if I want it twice and my, my wife wants it six times, both of us need to be thinking about how to get to four. Both of us. That's how you compromise a marriage. Okay. Well, that's cool. Well, we're about to run out of time. Um, so we want to make sure everybody checks out the article. Um, hashtag 10 pounds for love on stephenjamesdixon.com. Um, we had a couple more interesting topics and, um, like I really wanted to get, to get into prenups, but we can discuss that next week. Did you have something else, Steven? No, I think let's, cause yeah, prenups, we can't talk about no couple minutes. We gotta, no, that's going to be a serious discussion. <laughs> You're not going to let me get away with just saying, yeah, <laughs> no. hey, y'all should get a prenup. No. Yeah. So, uh, we'll talk about prenups next week. We'll talk about, um, I had some different experiences with some couples this week in relationship coaching. So we'll hit both of those things this week. And so thanks, everybody, for listening. Have a good day. Bye, y'all. You you got to say the whole little ending thing. Oh, my bad. Okay. So <laughs> please don't forget to subscribe <laughs> and follow the podcast so you can be automatically alerted when we produce a new episode on iTunes, Spreaker.com, Google Play, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Y'all tell a friend, and we will see you next week. Definitely tell a friend. Thanks a lot. Divorce is not an option.